Hello learners, welcome to the course of Human Resource Planning. I am Dr. L.K. Jena, your instructor of the course. In addition to welcoming you for this course, I would like to say that in this course you are going to get the inputs on understanding the various approaches that is followed on human resource planning, the different trends that affects organizations, employees and job applicants. We will also, like, we'll also be understanding about the importance of human resource planning in the present organizational scenarios. Also, we would like to understand about different issues like the external and internal issues that influences human resource planning. We will also be trying to understand and appreciate the dynamics that is involved in various forecasting techniques. I think precisely in this session, we would like to study in terms of the importance of planning, planning and human resource, why is human resource planning important, the environmental issues, as I said, the need for human resource planning, you being the prospective HR professional, what are the role when you are going to assume the human resource planning and so also the different barriers of human resource planning. I think talking about the importance of planning, if you see today's organizations, they need to stand apart, they need to survive, they need to operate and grow in a very high competitive market. So therefore, change is the order of the day. It is said by a philosopher that life is a change, we need to meet it. I think organizations also carries lives with us, the people. So if it wants to stand apart and if it wants to stand competitive among in the market, then it should prove, your, prove itself. Therefore, change is the order of the gene A. The change that it witnesses, it may be either in the form of a sudden change, a revolutionary change. For example, at present when we witness pandemic, so uh, you know the pandemic changes, the pandemic situation brings out some kind of sudden revolutionary change to an organization. Or sometimes when organization stands in a competitive market, obviously it need to go for some kind of evolutionary change, the slow changes. The efficient managers are those people who are able to foresee the problems that is likely to occur and they are supposed to prevent them. Uh, I would like to quote uh, a, a, a message that was given by Terry, Professor Terry. He told the successful managers are those people who are able to deal with the foreseen problems and whereas the unsuccessful managers are those ones who actually struggle with the unforeseen problems. So friends, over here, the difference between the successful managers and the unsuccessful managers, the difference lies in the planning. In this course, when you are undergoing this course, I presume that you are going to be, you are going to be the future managers. So you are expected to foresee to make the future favorable to the organization because through that you can in order through that you can able to achieve the goal effectively therefore we need to introduce the actions overcome the current problems prevent the uncertainties that comes in future we need to adjust the goals with the unforeseen environmental conditions and also need to exert all different kinds of resources that we have with us very intelligently to see that we are able to realize the organizational goal. I think let's talk about when I'm referring about planning, how planning and human resources are connected to one, one another. You know, resource, when you are referring in terms of resource in organization, you'll be finding out varied resources. There will be a living resource called man. There will be a few more non-living resources like material, money, methods, and marketing. So these are some of the non-living non resources. So when you talk about the man resource, what you need to do is we need to place or we need to plan the right man to be placed in the right job. Okay. 
and we need to develop them effective team members so that you know that will be, become an important function for every manager so human resource planning i think when you're adding the planning and human resource human resource planning is a deliberate strategy for acquiring the people improving the people and preserving them so that the enterprise human resource will be at high human resource planning involves uh, ensuring that the organization is having the right kind of people at right time and it need to adjust the requirement to the available supply therefore as human resource planning is a very important decision making process it it is supposed to combine some important activities windmill one of the organizational theorists in the field of hr he stated that there are three important activities that is influencing human resource plan or that is supposed to be carried out while we say that we are doing the job of human resource plan number 1 it is to identify and acquire the right number of people with having the right skills number 2 we need to see that they are being properly motivated so that whatever the goals that the organization sets for them they can achieve and third one is the organization need to create a link the link between the objectives of the organization that is the business objectives and the resource planning activity so now let's talk about <coughs> why human resource planning is important human resource planning is basically it is a very very forward looking function because over here you know when it is talking about how the business is going to move on on the people forefront and when it is sharing the necessary direction to it then obviously it gets to be as the integral part of business plan human resource planning is very important for both organizational organizations and its employees because it makes people and the organization future ready so over here you can see uh, that the basic goal of human resource planning is to see that or is to predict that predict about the future and basing on the prediction human resource planning uh, used to implement used to plan for implementing the manpower programs so as to avoid any anticipated problems human resource planning therefore when we come in the form of a definition we can say that human resource planning is the process for examining an organization or individuals future human resource needs and developing human resource policies and practices so as to address the potential problems for example when you are thinking about implementing the training programs i think let's talk about the other aspects because when we plan for human resource anyways when you are doing any kind of planning we need to take care of what kind of environment we are in what kind of internal environment we have and what kind of external environmental influences we get so first of all over here we need to know about event okay when you are thinking about environment first of all we need to know about an event so any issue any issue can be called as an event or trend which has the potential to affect the human resource outcome the human resource outcomes are in the form of motivation and by motivation turnover absenteeism the number of and type of people who are needed and so forth so if we see the external and internal issues that are the forces that drive human resource planning one of the issue that you can find out is the demographics i think uh, that is an important part of it that is called as the composition of the national workforce i think if we we'll see broadly the workforce of the future is lying on with asians i think that asians are having the highest amount of young workforce within them the another prediction in the workforce dying in the demographics will be the women who are constituting a 
create a big segment of the workforce which was not there in the past. The increased participation of women, it is giving a lot of pressure to the organization to come out with something called as a pro-family policy such as you know there are policies like flexi time there are policy like child care there are policies labor legislative policies like rich facilities and so on and so forth to support the working mothers in today's workforce also we used to find an increased representation of minorities because when those people are present in your workforce then you have to tune yourself to give more emphasis on the diversity programs because by creating the diversity platform in an organization we can ensure harmonious relationship between workers from different racial and ethnic groups after the demographic issues the second external issue that hr planning may interface is about the technology we may see from 1980s onwards for the last 40 years if there is something called as a tremendous amount of improvement that took place is the information technology given the size of investment a variety of changes in the human resource areas have occurred there are many organizations who have actually announced plans to reduce its workforce because of the technological changes we may find out policies like state bank of india in 1999 they came out with a golden handshake when they have injected the technology into their uh, into their working platforms then lot of people they felt like you know they felt that need to be reduced so therefore they come out with a golden handshake plan so these are all the these two are the external issues whereas when in case of internal issues we may find first of all the structure the structure mean it refers how we are designing our task who are actually reporting to whom the reporting relationship how decisions are made among hierarchies how people communicate with each other as a part of this restructuring restructuring some of the companies actually they are creating teams i think if you will see the it organizations in today's days you'll be finding out they are working as teams they are to be called as a project teams i think many mnc's they are working on teams so obviously that is also an internal issue when you are thinking about human resource planning the second and the largest issue is called as a business strategy the approach that a company adopts in conducting the business is called as a business strategy for example we may find a company may be adopting strategy for example the quality enhancement right if we see a company like toyota which is looking forward for quality as its goal there are companies who look for cost reductions and there are different other issues so it is important for an organization to monitor both the external and internal environment and to anticipate and understand the issues that is basically affecting the human resource in the future coming to the third agenda that is talking about the need for human resource planning why human resource planning is important the need for planning has arisen mostly when the modern organization have started living in a world called as buka world b u c a buka mean volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity so if the modern organization need to survive operate and grow in a highly competitive market economics they need to be either they need to be be a revolutionary which i told that is a sudden change they have to appreciate they have to accept or they need to be you know revolutionary so efficient managers are those people who are living in this buka world they are supposed to foresee the problem that is likely to occur and they are supposed to prevent them there are a lot of theorists they spoke about the need for human resource planning for example uh, the human resource theorist like meginson and their colleagues they say that to have an organization that looks forward to the future and tries to stay alive and prosper in a changing world 
if they want to be like this then they are supposed to be active vigorous continuous and they are they need to have a creative planning in that therefore when you connect this court with that of human resource planning human resource planning is supposed to facilitate the realization of company's objectives for the future and need to determine appropriate means for achieving those objectives so human resource planning is the process by which an organization is ensuring that it has the right number and the kind of people at the right place and they are in the right time they have the capability of effectively and efficiently completing the task which is, which will help the company to achieve the overall objective that is being set so therefore when you are reaching to more specific hr planning that is required to be met what we need to do as hr professionals we need to forecast the hr requirements we need to see that people are able to cope up with the change in the varied market conditions the technological changes when it happens the government regulation policy when it changes so we need to study that we need to see the existing hr productivity of our organization how our hr is productive is the hr is able to see what the organization needs in terms of the people requirements so therefore if we put up properly the human resource planning if it carries out properly then it will give a great amount of benefits we can create a reservoir of talent we can prepare our people for the future we can expand our contract we can cut the cost and we can create a very robust succession planning i think when you are doing a kind of human resource planning let me share you how the human resource planning is taking place you know the hr planning process happens in an environment in an environmental setup you know in an environment there are different organizations functions so for an organization where you or i work we need to understand first of all its objectives and policies the objectives and policies need to have two arms one is called as a hr need forecast how much of people we need and the other one is to be called as a hr supply forecast how many people are available in the market so one hand we have the need the other side is the supply so when we connect this need and supply together we can do a hr programming once after doing the hr programming we can go for implementing the plan that is called as human resource planning implementation human resource planning implementation is to see that we are getting the best talent that is called the right man placed in the right job at the right time but suppose sometimes if we fail behind it then we can go for controlling and evaluating our program controlling and evaluating of the program again have two separate wings one is called when suppose when you are having a surplus human resource so at that point of time you see many public sectors these days they are saying that you know we have surplus resources so now government is saying you need to restrict your hiring some companies when they have a surplus resource but they cannot you know just take out their employees out so they can go for reduced working hours there will be like six schemes like voluntary retirement schemes that i have spoken about it in terms of companies like state bank of india that they did in 1999 and layoffs this is for the surplus whereas in case of shortage you know when there is not ample people are available in our uh, resource basket then obviously we can go for recruiting and selecting our people so over here the jobs when it is being carried out then what are the expected roles of human resource professionals human resource professionals need to perform three categories or three kinds of roles one is called as an administrative role the administrative role says the human resource planning human resource planning professionals they need to manage the organizational resources they need to check what are the other resources are 
and how how productive they are okay then to make it more productive or say for the non living resources the machine money okay materials so to make it productive they need to understand that how much of people are required to make it productive so they are supposed to manage the organizational resource when they get the people in they are also supposed to take care of them because unless you provide them the right conducive environment to them they will not feel like continuing with you so employee welfare activity is the second agenda or the second administrative role that they are supposed to hr professional are supposed to do the second role is called as a strategic role you know when we do planning planning is a planning is called as a blueprint of action and this blueprint happens well beforehand so in strategic role the hr professional are supposed to formulate the hr strategies for for their organization they need to that's the reason they need to be in touch with the line managers who can provide them necessary assistance to realize the organizational strategy from the hr point of view so they are supposed to manage the relationship with their managers so this is the second role the third one is called as a specialized role the specialized role mean when you are doing a job of human resource planning they need to collect the data analyze that data and also they need to design and apply the forecasting techniques and when they do this forecasting techniques and they get the people in they are supposed to see that they are managing their careers properly so therefore the role of hr professionals what i have spoken in terms of three different roles and though there are many other combination of roles which is also been possible with the different focuses based on circumstances of an organization we hr professionals need to evolve so managing relationship with managers and for mutating strategies are need to be weighed equally because when you mutate the strategy we are placing the role of strategic role we are making the strategic role when as when you are managing the relationship we are more on to administrative role so it need to be weighed equally the activities in these areas are equally important to human resource planning because of the implicit purpose of anticipating and implementing the change in the organization the administrative aspect of the work what i have spoken that is represented in managing the staff functions of human resource planning and in managing the employee welfare activities whereas if you see the contemporary times the primary attention that many organizations they give is a combination of three important categories of activities they are expecting that human resource professionals need to know where to collect the data inside from the organization or when they require to study the benchmarking of other organization they need to understand that who are the competent organization from there they can collect the data the hr professionals also need to know about how to analyze the data they need to design and apply the forecasting system and they are supposed to know how to manage the career development path for their employees so these activities are new to the functions in many organizations and they are closely linked with the mission of anticipating and managing change so this is called as the role of human resource professionals so when we come to an end of this lecture we need to understand also about what are the possible barriers to human resource planning the human resource practitioners are perceived as experts in handling personal matters but they are not experts in managing business this is a big challenge because human resource professionals like you anywhere wherever people are graduating with an mba degree they have they they have studied about the human res- how to you know how to do an administrative function of hr but they are not supposed to be when you are looking for a profile as a hr planning expert then obviously we need to understand how to manage the business people second point is people are questioning the importance for making the human resource practices future oriented and the role that is assigned to hr practitioners are in formulating the organizational strategies so there are people when needed offer 
handsome packages of benefits to them to quit when you find them in surplus. But when the task is so simple, where is the need for elaborate and time consuming planning for human resources? So that needs to be thought about it. The third point is the HR information that is available. It is often incompatible with other information that is used in strategy formulation. Strategy planning efforts, how long been oriented towards financially forecasting, actually that often, you know, it excludes the other type of information. So therefore financial forecast takes precedence over HR planning. So we need to create a robust system wherein the HR planning need to provide in term of a correct quantitative picture of how much of money that is going to be involved to procure and develop the human resource, the internal human resource. Conflicts that may exist between the long term and the short term HR need. For example, there may arise a conflict between the pressure to get the work done on time and the long term need, such as preparing the people for assuming greater responsibilities. Many managers, they are sometimes of the belief that the HR needs can be met immediately because skills are available on the market as long as the wages and salaries are competitive. Therefore, my advice is the long term plans are not required. Short term planning are only needed. That is a barrier to human resource planning. There is also been a conflict between quantitative and qualitative approach to human resource planning. Some people, they view human resource planning as a number game that is designed to track the flow of people across the departments. So non-involvement, there is another barrier is the non-involvement of operating managers that renders human resource planning ineffective. So succession planning needs a very coordinated effort on the part of operating managers and HR personnel. So these are the barriers that we need to keep in mind when you are designing a human resource planning. But in overall, the things that we covered in this session is to understand why human resource planning is important. We have also studied about some of the definitions of human resource planning and from there we are trying to explore the need of human resource planning, the forecasting techniques and also we studied about the external and internal environmental influences of human resource planning. I have also spoken about what are the expected roles of human resource planning professional, you being the human resource planning HR professional in future so you need to understand what is being expected. And similarly, we have also finally concluded with what are the possible barriers that you can see when you are under the when you are under the job of human resource planning. Thank you so much, friends.